Hey everyone, this is Amy Eaton, and I am recording this video for my Facebook group, which is a group for handmade sellers who are looking to improve their awesome product photography so that they can better sell their products and find incredible success in their business. Um, I'm recording this because normally I do Facebook Lives, but I haven't been able to yet figure out, I don't believe you even can, do screen sharing with Facebook Live. So, I want to show them this little tip today and I'm going to share it with everyone because I can screen share with a YouTube video. So here we go. Um, I'm today. So today we're going to talk about white balance. Um, it's one thing that I notice a lot of people struggle with and a lot of times when I'm browsing Etsy and I'm looking at product images and how they can be improved, white balance is often a big thing. So what white balance is, is the color tone of an image. So if you look at this image on my screen right now, you can see that it is, you know, some stuff lying on a white background. Um, the thing is that the bike, the background itself actually isn't white in this photo. It's supposed to be white in real life. It's white, but it's rendering a bit different. It's not quite as white as it's supposed to be which means that everything else in the photo also has a color that it's not actually supposed to be. And of course, as product sellers, we know that we want to make sure that the colors of the products that you're selling are rendered as true to form as possible so that when your customers are buying, they aren't getting something that is a different color than they really thought it was because that's the way it showed up on their screen. So the, we can do the best that we can do. Now, it's important to note that regardless of what you do in your editing process, different screens will always render colors slightly differently. So you can't guarantee a color because you might say on your computer, it might be the exact color of, of your product, but if a customer is browsing on their computer or their cell phone or whatever, that screen may render the color slightly differently. So they may think they're getting something that they're not quite. So make sure you have a disclaimer about that, uh, either in your shop policies or in the listing itself, just indicating that uh, you know, you do your best to make sure the colors are as true to form as possible, but uh, each screen does render colors differently and therefore there may be slightly different color expectations. All right, so here's where we're going to get started. So it's important that our original photo have what we call a neutral color. So it could either be white or it could be gray. Um, so right here we're using a white background. And that's perfect. So we can use the white background to make our adjustments. If you're taking a shot that doesn't have any white in it, you can use something called a gray card. And I will link to what a gray card is in the, in the description and you can just check it out. Basically, it's just a card that's usually 18% gray. It has to be the right amount of gray. Um, and you can just take one shot at the beginning of your shooting session with the gray card and use that to adjust your white balance throughout uh, as long as the shot stays the same like the lighting stays the same and and all that stuff um, you can just use it periodically throughout to be able to use it to adjust your white balance sounds a little confusing i'll probably do a little bit more of a detailed uh, video on the use of a gray card in the future but i just wanted to put that in here now so, but for the purpose of this video, I have shot this on a basic white background. So, and I know a lot of people are using that because white background is a good way to go. Uh, and I hope that you'll be able to use this as a way to adjust your white balance. Here we go. I'm going to select the eyedropper tool, which is this one right down here. They call it a color picker tool here in Pixlr. And I'm going to click on what is supposed to be a neutral white, which is my background. So I have clicked. So what that has done is down here in the swatches panel, it has selected that color. So I'm going to click on it. I have selected the RGB. These are the values that we're interested in, the RGB, which stands for red, green, blue. This is how much red, how much green, how much blue is in this particular swatch that we've selected from our white background. As you can see, red is coming in at 245, green 241, and blue 225. So this tells us that we have a color imbalance because when I've clicked on something that's supposed to be a neutral, which is the white, all of these values should be the same, which is actually some really good information that's gonna help us improve 
the overall white balance of this image. So I'm going to take the biggest value, which is 245, and we're going to use that as our base. It doesn't matter which of these you use as your base number. I always use the highest one because it's just easier to calculate, but um, they just need to be the same. It doesn't matter which one, they just need to be the same. So I'm going to use 245 as my base. So I'm going to leave red the same. Red is going to be 245. Green is 241, so I need to make that 245. So I know I need to add four green values or four. When I go into the color balance menu, I'm going to have to add, have to add four under the green slider. And for blue, I'm going to have to add 20 because it's at 225 right now. Okay, so now I have those values. I've just written them down on a notepad, so I know that I need to increase my greens by plus four, my blues by plus 20. So, okay, that was just an information seeking mission right there. Now to actually adjust the balance, I'm going to go to adjustments and color balance. And here's where we find our menu with the offsets. We're not gonna offset red at all because we've decided to use that as our base number, which was 245 and that was A-OK. -okay. But green, we need to increase plus four. So I'm gonna add in a four. So you can see the sliders moved a tiny bit. And for blue, we're adding 20. And that's increased it quite a bit. And that's it. So I have entered the values to offset that. Okay, and now you can see that this is an image with a white background. To really kind of hit home how this is gone, you can see that I can click on this. This was before I adjusted the color balance, and this is after. There is a notable difference here. This was it before, this is it after. So now that you can actually see the difference, you can see that this background is really not white at all. That is a yellowish gray background. And because we've adjusted the balance, now we have a nice white background, which also is rendering my colors more truly of the straws and not giving it some weird yellowish, greenish, whatever color cast that's very odd. So that's it, and it's really quite straightforward. And it seems a little complicated, but it's not at all. Um, and once you do it a couple of times, you realize how simple it really is. And it just it's a big help in making sure that you're just getting your white balance exactly as it is supposed to be. So I hope that you found that how to be helpful. And as usual, you can certainly join us in the Facebook group and ask whatever questions you have related to the video. If you're not a part of the group already and you're finding this on YouTube, you can find the group at Master Your Biz Photos with Amy Eaton in Facebook. So if you just search for that, it'll come up under the groups and you can request an invite. It is a closed group, but it's a great spot to learn more about product photography uh, and photos for your creative business. And uh, we talk photography there regularly. We have Feedback Fridays where people can get feedback on their images. I do weekly tutorials like this and uh, it's just all around a good time. So if you would like to join us, please do. I hope you've all enjoyed this video and have a great week, guys. We'll see you next week.